Equius Hawk was named by Anjitaro and Nexion on the old MS Paint Adventures forums. The name Equius takes its root from the word Equus, or horse. It may also be in reference to the play Equus, in which a boy discovers his sexual affinity towards horses. This would explain Equius's almost unhealthy obsession for anything related to hoof beasts. His first name could also come from the constellation Eculius, which means little horse. Equius's family's name comes from Zahak, a figure in Iranian mythology. Zahak was a handsome and clever prince, but he was easily manipulated by evil counselors. So the Araman, a demon of destruction akin to the devil, used him as a tool for world domination. Equius has several connections to the myth, with one of the more poignant ones being that Zahak was also known as Bevar Asp, which translates to he who has 10,000 horses, also known as a hundred squared horses. This could be associated with his typing quirk, since Equius replaces certain sections of words with 100 and its mirror 001. He also replaces the letter X and the word cross with the percentage sign. The percent sign probably being a reference to the different percentages of milk, such as 1 or 2%. The word percent also comes from the pseudo-Latin phrase per cent, meaning out of 100. Equius' screen name is Centaur's Testicle. The use of centaurs in the chum handle is a reference to how the Sagittarius is associated to a Greek centaur, a creature that is half human and half horse. The latter half of the name... Nope, nope, we're done. We're done with the section. Nope! Executor Darklear is the ancestor of Equius Sahak and is the post-scratch incarnation of Horus Sahak. He was tasked by his superiors to execute the followers of the Sufferer, though he could not bring himself to kill the Disciple, implied to be due to pale feelings, as Equius and Nepeta have. For his failure, he was banished by the Highbloods and became the Expatriate, as Marquis Spinneret Mindfang's journal calls him. After Mindfang escaped from her trial, she seeks out Darklear for a debt to be repaid, in the form of a prosthetic arm, as he was skilled in machines, analogous to his descendants' work on robotics. Mindfang had found that her admiration of Darklear had vanished over the sweeps, as he apparently never got over the situation involving the Disciple and his banishment. She considered his work to be a good distraction for any grieving that might weigh upon his mind. Due to his ability of being protected by a void that concealed him from Doc Scratch's omniscience, Mindfang left her magic cue ball that she had received from Scratch with Darklear, so that Doc Scratch could not be able to locate it. This ability is most likely related to his alternate self and his descendant being void players, and may provide an explanation for why Vriska was able to keep the cue ball hidden from Doc Scratch for so many years. Connecting to the Void, the second part of Dark Lear's name, Lear, is a German word that means empty. This may be a reference to his descendants and pre-scratch self's Void aspect. Lear could also reference that his descendant Equius has been known to stare, or leer. Equius mimics Dark Lear in the fact that he likes to build robots. He even builds a pair of robotic legs for Tavros, an arm for Vriska, and an entire indigo-blooded robot body for Aradia. In the end, he fulfills his ancestor's business by submitting to Gamzee's wishes, even to his own death, causing Nepeta's downfall in the process. Equius has three kinds of strife specify. However, due to his immense strength, he is unable to effectively wield bow kind and half bow kind. Fist kind, on the other hand, as the name suggests, Fistkind involves the user attacking with their fists. Though other characters have punched people before without it, so why would you even need a Strife Specibus to- You know what? I'm not gonna question it. So far, all users of Fistkind have been Void players. 
Void is the concept of nothingness, so this specifist could be seen as attacking with nothing. Equius cares about the Alternian caste system to a fetish degree. It seems fitting that his name bears a striking resemblance to the word acquiesce, which means submit or to comply silently or without protest. To hammer this point in, during Hivebent, when Gamzee and Equius are talking to each other, Gamzee says, If I could make you smile, that'd be the best miracle I ever did part of. After Gamzee snaps, he finally does make Equius smile by choking him till he's blue in the face and dies of asphyxiation. Yikes! Though, due to his references to cows and horses, one might be able to connect the characteristics of Equius's death to elements of castration. I'm not going into details, but that's where the term blue balls came from. Now for a hotly debated topic, is Equius Sahak a blue blood or an indigo blooded troll? The answer is both. The term blue blood means that a person, or in this case troll, is a member of a noble or socially prominent family, which Equius is. When it comes to actual blood color, he's an indigo blood. Indigo is a color that ranges from a dark to an almost purple kind of blue. The pronounced bags under his eyes are the same Newtonian indigo. Or are they bruises? It's understandable where this confusion would come from, though, as Equius is associated with two hues of blue. His text color in RBG value is 0086, but his blood color is 033203. The green value being 33 is a possible reference to Nepeta Leon. For more proof to his actual blood color, Equius has a song on the Colors in Mayhem Universe A album named Indigo Air. Interestingly, this piece was originally written for Dirk, titled Dirk's Dursite Dirge. This makes sense because of all the industrial sounds and synths, but someone organizing the album felt it a better fit for Equius. It was probably due to the Morse code hidden in the song. A quite blatant SOS can be heard repeatedly through the second half of the song. Listen. This could possibly hint at Equius's eventual death. The trolls Equius is in relationships with represent the signs Leo and Aries which, along with Sagittarius, make up the fire signs of the Zodiac. Equius openly admits to his Moirel Nepeta Leon that he would probably be far more dangerous if he didn't have her to keep him subdued. Equius has shown to be very protective of Nepeta, maybe even unintentionally so. Pre-game session, he had forbidden Nepeta from playing flarp with their friends. This may have saved her from being eaten by Vriska's Lucis. Maybe it's because Equius lived next to Vriska and was aware of all the trolls that Vriska fed to her Lucis and wanted to protect Nepeta from that fate. And on the other hand, while he likes games as long as they're serious, important, and have high stakes, Equius will begrudgingly accept to engage in more frivolous antics, like roleplay, solely for Nepeta's amusement. Their relationship is the iconic Moralance, and theirs is perhaps the single most straightforward and uncomplicated troll relationship among the entire group, nay, the entire webcomic. It is also seen in their quirk prefixes. If one were to take the less than and greater than signs and combine them, they would get the text form of the Moralance symbol. Lastly, Equius's Moiralance with Nepeta may be based on the good compatibility between the Sagittarius and Leo astrological signs. I've already covered a lot about Aradia Megiddo in her own video, but of course the blue-blooded robot that she inhabits during the game is all thanks to Equius and Artor for giving some of their blue blood to power the robot. 
Equius's constant need for towels is a possible reference to how horses have a tendency to sweat profusely. Horses produce more than twice as much sweat as humans can per square inch of skin. During an intense exercise, such as cross-country polo or endurance racing, horses can lose 10 to 15 liters of fluid an hour through sweat and through water vapor that he excels with each breath. I thought I'd add a little section on the majesty that is Arqueus Sprite. Like Dave Sprite, Arqueus is the guide of a Strider brother composed of an alternate version of them and their associated animal. A rambunctious crow for Dave, and a troll associated with horses for Dirk. That counts, right? Also, much of his conversations with Dirk tend to transcend into this which is similar to Equius's conversations with another hero of heart. Of course, the bad luck comes in when Arqueus' sprite gets sealed within Little Cal, along with Caliborn and part of Gamzee, because Doc Scratch and ultimately Lord English were made from Little Cal. This explains why the Doc acted so creepy when interacting with the kids, and why he wanted a Megiddo as a henchman, making the fact that he is insanely abusive to her all the more disturbing. It also explains how both Doc Scratch and Lord English are so strong. Equius is the heir of Void. More like devoid of air, am I right? Eh? He obtains his class spec from Matuna Captor, the heir of Doom, and Horus Zahak, the page of Void. Void is associated with the essence of lacking, or nothingness, and the concealment or outright destruction of knowledge. Calliope suggests that the Void aspect may be the opposite of the Light aspect, since Void players, like Roxy, have a knack for staying hidden, and mentions that Light players, like Rose, have the opposite effect. The Void seems to enable players to act without being seen or noticed, as evidenced by Dark Leers and Equius' apparent ability to hide the items and movements of two circuits from Doc Scratch, and Roxy's occasional dark patches from Calliope's viewpoint. Void players may potentially also have the ability to become invisible in some sense, as it is seen that the Beta II Draconian Dignitary becomes invisible with the Ring of Void, as well as Roxy reportedly becoming both invisible and intangible while wearing it. Odd, considering that the Orb Rings do not normally work on humans. It is also worth noting that the Void symbol is the inverse of the Space symbol, corresponding to the spots between the arms. The Void symbol is described by Andrew Hussey as a hollowed-out space symbol. Similarly, all known Void players have created a void around themselves to distance themselves from the world. Roxy and her drinking, Horus and his supposed happiness, and Equius and the Hemospectrum. The Void aspect may be related to the Furthest Ring, which has been referred to as the Void. This is further underlined by Roxy's affinity to the Furthest Ring, and Rose causing the blackout under the influence of the gods of the Furthest Ring. It's fitting, then, that all known heroes of Void have also been Durst Dreamers. It may also be worth noting that Equius's blood is used by Gamzee to void out information on Lord English and himself in the copy of Rose's book, Possessed by Calliope. The fact that Equius's aspect is void may be a reference to the astronomical object Sagittarius A, believed to be a black hole that is conveniently located in the Sagittarius constellation. Wait, aren't most of the human kids Sagittarius? This has some deep implications somewhere, I know it. And the last fridge stuck fact for Equius Zahak is... A good chunk of the fandom was seriously upset by Equius' death, to the point where the more vocal of the fans outright lost all sense of propriety, calling out creator Andrew Hussey on social media. Homestuck San. Homestuck San. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you being such a 12-year-old brat to this writer who will later make game over? 
What? Hussey could only shake his head in response because the fans had apparently not caught on that Equius was, in fact, a joke character. Callbacks! Yes, much like Gamzee Makara, Equius is a big old in-joke of a character, mixed with all of Hussey's pre emis Paint Adventure trolling escapades. He might just be one of Hussey's favorite trolls, purely for nostalgic reasons. The trolls' love of absurd animal-human hybrids came from Hussey's Humanimals comic series. Then there's Equius's fondness of robots and his odd way of rapping, which were both the subjects of And Don't Stop, another comic which Andrew Hussey used to work on. Even the paintings on the walls of Equius's hive come from some of Hussey's old ironic art reviews. Hussey's been quoted as saying, I used to do all sorts of weird stuff, but I thought it was funny. The whole span of these endeavors was quite trollish in nature, the fact that it puts some people off is part of what makes it funny. So Equius was that entire arena of trollish content rolled into a character. Andrew Hussey had planned Equius with a lot of TLC, showing Equius's plotline to be almost the opposite to another one of Hussey's characters, Whistles the Clown. Whistles was a clown obsessed with his ringmaster to the point that he would, and did, kill for him. However, when comparing the two, Hussey commented, But unlike Equius, I did plan on giving Whistles a heroic end. I always intended for him to overcome his obsession with his master. That's why I was strongly committed to maintaining the integrity of his arc, as I defined it. It was more important by far for me to adhere to his role as the up dude who embodies all that stuff than to have him blow it by doing something heroic. He believed he died the death of supreme integrity. And so do I. So, ultimately, Equius was written to lose to Gamzee, not to overcome his personal struggles and biases. And a lot of fans take exception to it and find that fact hard to take, so I'm very sorry you guys. Hussey eventually got sick of the fanbase's melodrama over this, responding to one fan on his forum string by saying, I'm just sort of shaking my head here at everyone crestfallen to the max about Equius' failure to stake a heroic claim on Homestuck's already immense plot footprint. Like, seriously? With a big a thing as this story is, people are gonna hold a candlelight vigil on my lawn for the great swan song of the dude whose overwhelming gimmick was fetishistic submission? There are bigger f***ing fish to fry, people! Time to get a grip. Thank you guys so much for watching this Fridge Stuck episode for Equius Sahak. I hope you enjoyed. Any facts I missed? Do you have a character or a concept that you'd like to see? Leave it down in a comment below and it might end up on the show someday. Be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. And I will see you all next time. Bye! I used to be an adventurer like you. And I took an arrow in the knee.